Uh, now, these guidelines are the consensus, consensus guidelines on the use of bisphosphonate therapy in children and adolescents. So, most of the aspects have been covered by sir. And basically, what these guidelines, they begin with the definition of osteoporosis in children. So, it begins with the DEXA BMD Z score less than 2. That is age, gender and height match norms with recurrent long bone fractures. Now, what recurrent long bone fractures means? More than equal to 2 or a vertebral compression fracture irrespective of the BMD Z score. So what are they recommending? They're recommending, they recommend the use of uh, bisphosphonates in primary osteoporosis, secondary osteoporosis, conditions other than skeletal fragility and hypercalcemia. So beginning with the conditions of primary osteoporosis, they are OI and IGO, what they have dealt with. Uh, beginning with OI, so what are the reasons, what are the indications of use of bisphosphonates in OI? First of all, the use of IV bisphosphonates indicated in severe form or in any other OI who have vertebral compression fractures or more than equal to two long bone fractures. And secondly, oral bisphosphonates are also indicated, but they are indicated only in mild to moderate forms in the absence of vertebral compression fractures. So this is a very good flowchart which they mentioned. Just to uh, summarize it, what they say, if there's a young person with primary osteoporosis, for example, OI, and with significant fragility fractures, that is two long bone fractures or any spine fractures, that is an indication for bisphosphonate therapy. In all cases, you optimize bone health, that is you look at calcium, vitamin D and nutrition. If bisphosphonate therapy is indicated, the dosages are zolindronic acid of 0.1 mg per kg per year, that is given every six months. Or this is a higher dose. The higher dose. Yes, sir. Like, when was the 18, sir. 17, 18. They actually proved it for one year. They said 0.01 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But less than two months. We start with the lesser dose. We start with the lesser dose. We start with the lesser dose. But this, but what they have actually mentioned, you starting with this one. So yeah. later they so mentioned the point slightly point higher dose. Later on, which is later on. on. So you have to first do that one. Yes, sir. Go. Which they have mentioned later. So. Or pamidronate actually nine nine mg per kg per year over four to six divided doses. Now what do you do here? You do an annual DEXA uh, for these patients. If it is still less than two, you continue the same dose. If it is improving but still not zero, you can consider halving the dose and then you do DEXA annual. And if it is gone above zero, you can either stop or you think of maintenance therapy where zolindronate is given at 0.025 mg per kg per That is one fourth of this dose. Or pamidronate is given at 3 mg per kg per year in two divided doses. You consider stopping therapy when cessation of linear growth is finished. In Yes. Our recommendation we talked about was 18 years. Yes. So you said 5 to 18 years. If you have got two or more fractures, then you give treatment. Mm. Otherwise, you don't need treatment. Don't need treatment. But when you talk about why uh, they will come with present only with the long term treatment, this is more like milder forms in that situation. Uh, not puberty. So 18, so they're continuing now. Mostly. Yes, puberty. Then get. If we stop stopping somewhere, at adult, at stopping a linear growth, that is later, even beyond people. So more than zero, also now people talk about maintenance. Don't stop. Till 18 years, don't stop. Yeah. Because that is the time when you want the bone mass to be better. So if it's more than zero, you continue 0 0.01 to 5. Yes. That is the minimum dose average. Which is even lower than yes. one second. So also, what they mentioned is that you're doing annual BMD. So at any time the BMD falls, so you restart therapy after that. This is what uh, coming to IGO, which is a much milder form, what they mentioned is that bisphosphonate are recommended only in the severe forms and reduced dose after two years if BMD improves. Now, coming to the cause of secondary osteoporosis, now there are multiple causes of secondary osteoporosis such as inflammatory, immobility, iatrogenic nutrition, etc. What they're focused here on is mainly CP. So I will be talking about that. But before that, what are the general secondary osteoporosis recommendations? First of all, what they're saying is that children with vertebral fractures and or low BMD and two or more long bone fractures should be considered for IV bisphosphonate therapy. You look at the nutrition, you look at the calcium, phosphorus, etc. Look at everything. And one important thing is that many of these children are on steroid and they might have gonadal, I mean, they might have delayed hypogonadism. So take care of that by 14, pubertal induction should be done. 
a very important point of which is mentioned here is in general prophylactic bisphosphonate therapy that is treating a low bone density z score in the absence of fracture is not recommended so in cp what they mentioned is that bisphosphonates do increase the bmd however there is limited data so prophylactic use is not justified very rarely you can use in very severe pain and the final recommendation recommendation what they have mentioned is that, that you should do an annual bmd treatment beyond 2 years and only if there's an ongoing fracture and an intolerable bone pain can you use bisphosphonates in cp now this is a, a, a diagram which they mentioned here it is more or less same but there's slight differences from the primary osteoporosis what they are saying if you the guidelines are the same that you have low bmd z score with two or more long bone fractures or you have a vertebral fracture then you start zoledronic acid at the same dose but here you check after 12 months after 12 months you check that but then if it becomes normal if you see an improvement you can think of stopping it right there you don't have to half the dose or anything you stop right there if it's not improving or the uh, the insulting drug is continuing such as glucocorticoid etc you consider it for one more year and then again after one year do the same process think of stopping if it is improved or you can consider maintenance as well no conditions other than the skeletal fragility uh, condition no, i think this is slightly different from the uh, yes sir we talks about even without fracture yes sir so that's what they mentioned one is that both before there and then that talks about if your bmd that score is very low you have got a risk factor yes sir prevent it which doesn't which is not really bad you will not wait somebody okay sir you got so we go you are on steroids mm -hmm. and wait for two factors to happen that will be uh, probably a proactive reactive strategy yes. not about proactive they have categorically mentioned no prophylactic uh, death uh, conditions such as fibroid dysplasia so we get lot of patients in fact who complain of pain in these lesions so iv bisphosphonates are highly effective to treat the bone pain now the maximum time is mentioned as 2 years and it should be lesser if you are seeing that the bmd in other bones is increasing so in that is the reason where you should decrease the dose and however it leads to no change in the lesion size of fibrous dysplasia or any expansion there is no change in that what about avascular necrosis it can be used for again pain control but there is no evidence of its effect in the prevention of bony collapse in these cases this is mainly coming out from uh, australian study yes, that sir. in the animal models okay, it is not proven so yes, some sir. of the orthopedic people they use a lot of uh, in avian okay sir. but it is not proven just for pain control sir that one now what about bone cyst tumor and mets again there is limited evidence now may be considered in large or rapidly expanding lesions if the conventional therapies are failed or are not feasible so which drug is effective in animal bone cysts the dilosumab or patient had a pain yeah so dilosumab is something which is there okay. which is effective this possibly some but the problem again is what do you do once you stop mm -hmm. what will happen yes. in the process So this was this we had one patient and he went out for making the diagnosis. Yes, sir. And the, there was one patient report similarly was discussed in the UK group. Doctor sent it mm -hmm. last year to the entire time. Yes, sir. The dilemma is that if you what do you do? Then there is the hypocalcemia, mm -hmm. stop it, hypercalcemia. So nevrosumab is theoretically the better drug for nevrosumab so because it is the more rapid, potent. Potent. Now what about inflammatory condition? This is CRMO is basically a recurrent osteomyelitis condition. very rare and it is used in second line for pain reduction and uh, generalized arterial calcification of infants very rare condition again there's calcification in the arteries and in these severe cases it might be used now what about the very common usage which we use is hypercalcemia so hypercalcemia what they mention only when refractory to dietary restrictions and iv hydration then you start uh, think of uh, these bisphosphonates It is always given as a low dose bisphosphonate that is pamidronate at 0.25 mg per kg, zolendronate at 0.0125 mg per kg, and at least 48 hours between two doses, and do repeat dosing until the disease is until the underlying disease is controlled. Now monitoring of calcium levels within the first 72 hours should be done. So just one thing, uh, this dose is much less than the one for one mg per kg that is somewhere mentioned sir in pediatrics. The one mg per kg is very high. Pamidronate. 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 So this is like uh, this is the uh, half to quarter. Half to quarter. To start with lower dose only that.
Now, how do you assess a child who's going to be started on uh, bisphosphonates? The basic test, what they, they mentioned is full blood count, urea electrolytes, LFT, vitamin D, PTH, calcium magnesium, and a dental review. But in if you if the essential investigation should be a calcium phosphorus ALP at the beginning of the starting of medicine of the medication. Now, very importantly, all post-pubertal, all post-menarchal girls should undergo a pregnancy test because of the uh, possible teratogenic effects. This is another debate. How long should pregnancy yes. be avoided? Because we don't know how many years this is very so how do you assess the patients who are on uh, bisphosphonates? The uh, best and the most feasible uh, investigation we have currently for assessing is the DEXA. So you do a DEXA prior to first dose and then annually. PQCT, peripheral QCT can be done, but only in centers there are, which complement, it can complement DEXA, but only in centers with experience. After that, X-ray is fine. Well, a baseline and then as clinically indicated, such as the height is coming down or any sudden back pain, the child is complaining. Another thing, bone turnover markers, it says osteocalcin, P1, NP, they're all experimental and currently have no role in general clinical assessment. Now, what are the side effects of bisphosphonates? After the first dose, as Sir mentioned, in up to 80 patients, 80% 80 patients can get fever, myalgia, lethargy, etc., which are easily man uh, managed by analgesia and fluids. This is usually within 24 to 48 hours. Hypocalcemia, hypophosphatemia may occur due to osteoclase inhibition, but also maybe due to underlying vitamin D deficiency, renal disease, ongoing glucocorticoid therapy. So in patients who have hypocalcemia, a trial, a role of calcium trial for three days may also be given after the first dose. And there is no routine phosphate supplementation in any recommendation for any phosphate supplementation in these patients. So the final recommendation is you keep vitamin D more than 50. This is nanomole per liter uh, prior to the first infusion. You do adequate calcium intake post-infusion, PCM and antimatic, and you give the reduced first dose as we just did. The first dose should be a lesser dose than the uh, following doses. There are rare but postulated side effects such as iritis. So any child who comes with a red or painful eye, ophthalmological examination should be done. It could be uh, an underlying feature of an underlying rheumatological problem. Atypical femoral fractures. These yeah. fractures in young people in bisphosphonates may not be drug related. So it's not a necessary indication to stop treatment. What about uh, yeah. osteonecrosis of jaw? Basically, all what they have mentioned and also there is no per se studies or any case report in pediatrics. Yeah, but it is a common problem in adults. So any dental uh, any dental issue or in dental review, etc. should be done prior. And every 6 to 12 months, a dental review should be done of these patients. What about the teratogenic effects? Now what they mention is pregnancy avoided for at least 12 months after a dose of bisphosphonates. And all post menarchal girls should undergo pregnancy tests prior to bisphosphonate administration. Esophagitis, as Sir mentioned, like first of all, oral bisphosphonates are indicated only in mild to moderate disease. So it can be, it should be given to in children who can reliably swallow a whole tablet with glass or at least two glasses of water and should not have a coexisting GERD, make them sit for at least half an hour or two hours, and then uh, they can lie down. And delayed bowel healing, we get a lot of patients who have fractures, ongoing fractures of what to do. Until and unless there's callus formation at the osteotomy site, don't start bisphosphonates. Only when there's proper callus formation, you should think of starting bisphosphonates. So what are the contraindications for therapy? Of course, pregnancy, renal impairment. Now, this is an important point. If we have a condition with, where there's increased bone mass, such as uh, your osteopetrosis or hypophosphatasia, where giving these drugs will actually cause more harm, so that is not indicated in those conditions, and active rickets. And finally, bone bisphosphonate therapy should be stopped if the BMD-SDS score is going more than two. So that is an indication of stopping uh, bisphosphonate.